Hi, everybody. Welcome to Am I the Asshole Podcast. I'm Danny Vega, joined by my lovely, lovable co-host, Sarah Levine. What's good today, Sarah? What is good? Oh, my God. I didn't even tell you this story about how I went on this PR trip from hell. And then... Oh, boy. So, okay. This is the thing where I feel like you know the type of person I am, and I'm usually, like, very anxious and always playing it safe. So I was invited to this PR event in the Hamptons. It was like, oh, you know, free shit, like mm-hmm. wellness stuff, like skincare, blah, blah, blah. But it was last Saturday, which was like the day before New York was going to maybe get hit with a hurricane. And oh, my God, I didn't even know about yes. that. Yes. Oh, Wild. my gosh. Hurricane Henri. And um, and I didn't. The thing is, though, like I didn't really know about this alleged hurricane until like Friday night when my friend was like, hey, should we still go to that thing tomorrow? And I was kind of like, yeah, it'll be fine. Like, I feel like every time it rains, it's a tropical storm warning. So I didn't really know that it was serious. And then I was kind of like Googling like late at night and it was like, oh, no, this is supposed to be like the worst hurricane in 20 years. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, Oh, my God. Yeah. And so I kind of woke up the next morning and I texted my friend like, hey, you know, um, just checking the vibe. Like, should we still go? And she was like, oh, my God, I'm going to kill you. And I was like, oh, shit, okay, like we'll we'll go and it will be fine. But I was kind of worried that we would get like stuck in the hurricane, like on the way back from the Hamptons. Um, And we got caught in crazy traffic even on the way there. And I was like. This is not boating well. And like, sure enough, it took us about six hours to get back on the bus. Um, It was just a nightmare. Uh. Like the the PR rep, she was so nice. And the the event itself was like beautiful. But like it just shouldn't have happened that day because I didn't even know this until we were like two hours into the bus right there. But like usually when you go to these events, someone some PR rep is like traveling with you like there was. There was nobody from the company like traveling with us. So it was just all these like influencers and this poor bus driver and like nobody had any authority, which didn't matter on the way there. But then on the way back, one girl was like sick and I don't know if she like drank too much or just got car sick, but whatever. But then like she kept getting sick. The bus driver at one point, like he kept like stopping at like gas station stuff. At one point he had just pulled over on the side of like the highway and we were like, well, this is not safe. And also like, we need to get back to New York before this fucking hurricane hits. And like, it just almost became a mutiny <laughs> oh because he kept God. stopping the bus because this girl was like <laughs> feeling sick. And we, the rest of us were like, we cannot keep stopping this bus. It was not, and we were caught in traffic and it was just like, it took, Oh, it took no. like, like five it. or six hours to get back. And it was truly, truly like a nightmare. Okay. I know you're an influencer, but just the idea of a lot of <laughs> sick influencers no, it was crazy. is kind of hilarious. Oh and yeah, I know. Enjoyable. <laughs> Just like, oh, my God, I have 100,000 followers. Why is this happening? Like, that yeah. is kind of delicious. No, it was. I was like, this is fire Festival. It was kind of funny. But I mean, now, honestly, the next day I was ready to laugh about it. But like at the time, I was like so pissed, but mostly at myself because I, I don't know why. But I w- like normally I would have just been like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not going. Um, I, I don't want the worst case scenario to happen. But I feel like I've. I don't know. I had this thing where I was like, oh, it'll it'll be fine. Like, you know, and and it, it just wasn't. Um, and I was like, I don't know why of all the things to like take a risk on. I decided to take a risk on mm-hmm. this, um, but I did and it, it didn't play out well at all. So um, that's never, never taking a risk again. Um, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. funny because like we didn't actually get stuck in a hurricane and like it was just raining, but. It was kind of a nightmare situation. I also got Botox. I don't really like it. Really? You got the Botox, Yeah, huh? well, I don't know. I was like a drink in, and I was just like, you know what? I've endured so much to get to this fucking event, and they were like, we can give you... It's it's not Botox. It's a different brand, and they were like, oh, we can give you a little bit of this, and I was like, sure, fuck me up. Mm. Um, So I got these, like, a few injections in my forehead, which kind of hurt, and like... It's Hmm. weird because when I raise my eyebrows, like I don't it's completely smooth in the spots where I was injected. But then like 
because I didn't get my whole forehead Botox because like, I don't know, I'm not a real housewife. Like I still have wrinkles yeah. at the top of my forehead. So it just feels like a little bit hmm. silly. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think I would Is do this, it again. I'm looking at your your Insta right now. Is it applied to your forehead in this uh, TikTok? I would gladly pay to live in someone else's head. Um, Let's see. I can't even tell. I'm like, I, I don't I think I was really moving my, my forehead in this one. So no. I'll send you a, a, a selfie of me trying of me like raising my eyebrows. It's not that subtle, but I don't think I would do it again because um, I feel like you have to get it everywhere so that you're wrinkle free and not just like <laughs> wrinkle free in some spots. And also, I don't like the feeling of like feeling like I can't completely furrow my eyebrows. So, yeah, <laughs> like, I'm like, hmm. eh, not worth it for me. Well, for what it's worth, I've literally never had the thought. Sarah looks wrinkly. Thank you. No, I've and I've thought, never been like, oh, I need, right? No, I've never been like, oh, I need to get this. But I was just like, I've endured. <laughs> I was like, we endured like a, it took us like probably four hours to even get there. Or maybe three and a half. I don't know. It took us a long time. And I was like, you know what? Sure. Fuck me up. Why not? Fuck it right up. I mean, when I used to go to Beantown, Boston on buses, it was fascinating how horrible it could be. Oh, yeah. It would average five hours. But I remember the worst one ever was um, almost eight Oof. hours. And that was beyond miserable. And one time, <laughs> one time only, it was three and a half oh, hours. And a dream. it was unreal. And then you're like, oh, well, maybe I should do it again because it wasn't so bad that time. And then it takes you eight hours the next time. Oh, so but I mean, I hate being in a bustle day. I mean, I feel for that girl who got sick because it was the no. I felt bad for her, and she was like really sweet, but it it just was like a crazy situation where we were like we're in crazy traffic. There's a hurricane. Everybody's trying to leave the Hamptons right now, like, and there was no person of authority. It was this poor bus driver who was like dealing with all these people, like with conflicting interests. (laughs) Oh, yeah. What a mess. Yeah, I don't really have too much juice to report. I mean, I am making huge leaps and bound growth on my smoothies. I've become a smoothie guy. Love that. Um, Some of you may have noted that I went to uh, the Dutch Brothers about an hour and a half away from where I live in L.A. because I was craving Dutch Brothers. And then I started to become a Starbucks fanatic and I was at Starbucks every day. And then my friend is like, you got to go to indie shops. And then I did some indie shops. And, you know, then I was spending all my money and i was like no i'm gonna make my own coffee smoothies Ooh, a I'm coffee gonna do smoothie. this thing yes Interesting. yes and and sarah let me tell you i almost almost got a vitamix which costs like five hundred dollars and then i went to costco i saw an 80 dollars blender and i'm all about it there we go you gotta start small you can only drop it. like half a grand on, a, on an appliance like once um like a month <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the Vitamix. I don't know who the Vitamix is for. I'm sure someone culinary will reach out and be like, I use my Vitamix every day. I use it to to grind dinosaur bones into dinosaur spices. So you wouldn't understand as a pathetic oh my ninja God. owner. I love it. No, it's been good. I make very healthy kind of coffee smooth. They're not really healthy. They're just not as unhealthy as the insanity they prepare for you at other places. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing a lot of that. And I've been running again. And otherwise, my life is pretty boring right now. I was telling Sarah on the bonus episode, by the way, you can join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod if you want all the juiciest juice. Um, I'm really just starting to be like, yo, I'm going to be single and that's what I'm going to do. And I've been making more videos. I've been throwing up ticky talkies and shout out to some of the wonderful people on YouTube asking me where the YouTube videos are. They're coming. I'm going to figure it out. I'm getting back into it. And yeah, I'm just kind of trying to feel myself and do my thing and not uh, I'm not on the apps and I'm not dating and uh, I'm just trying to be creative and be a little little artist. Love that for you. But genuinely I mean, look, Sarah, you're taking the path of formal growth. Mm -hmm. You're going Mm -hmm. to graduate school and I'm trying to focus on follower growth. So who's who who's making the right choice? Well, it's you. But this is what I'm doing. You're not going to be in debt. So, you know, go either way. Shout out to all our new patrons. Wow, guys, this is crazy. This this is is simply insane. Holly, Anna, Isabella, Hillary, Kyle, Jesse, Paul, Peyton. Wow, guys, welcome. We're so happy. It's it. been a, a good couple of weeks for oh, yeah. us. The um, gang's all here. The gang's all here. Guys, please join us as well on, on our Patreon. We got the WhatsApp. I mean, I think we have upwards of 70 bonus apps. I, I don't Ooh-hoo. even know how many it is now. 
we got a virtual happy hour. We are listening to this on Monday, so that'll be tomorrow. You could get go to the happy hour if you want. It's at uh, what is it, Sarah? Seven PM EST. Yeah, yeah it's at uh, it's at eight PM yeah, EST. It's eight. On Tuesday. Uh, yeah, where everybody just kind of hangs out and talks. And, um, and you know, the cool thing is you can join. And we've got all these things. We've got the cappuccino. I just threw a juicy sitch in there about somebody who rejected their adoptive parents. Actually, kind of oh, yeah, that was rejected a, their... That was a brutal one. Brutal one. Oh, my God. we got to talk about that yes. at the happy yes, hour. Yes, for sure. Um, but, yeah, the cool thing is, guys, look, well, I don't know how to build a podcast community. So if you're interested and you're like, oh, we should do this. Or wouldn't it be cool if we did that? Or this all sounds good then you should join and just tell me what you want and I'll do it for you. Um, it's really cool. Yeah, choose your it's own really adventure. Cool. Yeah, it's it's a wild world. And you know what else is wild? Guessing verdicts. Yes. So let's do this freaking thing, Sarah. A-I-T-A, girlfriend won't let dogs sleep in our room. Um, um, I'm just going to go N-T-A and the girlfriend is. NTA is wrong. So OP is 21, GF's 20. The dogs have been sleeping with OP for over eight years. He said he would sleep in the other room. Cause she, you know, she said she won't sleep with the dogs. She got pissed. She said it's non-negotiable. He doesn't want to make the pups change what they've done their entire dog lives. Difficult shopping 49. No assholes here. Your dogs don't understand anything beyond we are pack. Pack does everything together. Mm. This sounds like a deal breaker. No assholes mm, here. Okay. AITA for saying it's just a cat. Calm down to my friend's fiance, which made her angry. Hmm. I could see that being asshole-ish because it's like people care about their cats and their dogs. I like how we've taken a pet theme unintentionally here. I'm going YTA. You'd think. You'd think. But it was actually NTA. So here's the deal. OP sometimes hangs out with his neighbor's cat. He's a cool cat. The cat's real name is Baby. Don't ask why. But OP calls him Gary because he just seems like a Gary, you know. And the owner knows this and really does not care. Well... OP's friend's uh, fiance found out about this and was like, well, that's disrespectful. How would you like it if I started calling you a different name? Blah, blah, blah. And then and basically she was like, this is this is disrespect. He said it's just a cat. Calm down. And and she got mad about that. So the top comment was NTA. Gary sounds cool as hell, though. Please give him extra pets the next time you see him. Yeah, so that is one of the most insignificant <laughs> <laughs> situations like, we've ever done. I like Truly. the name of Gary for a cat, though. That's funny. I do, too. And I, I also like the character that's like, don't call him by his non-name. He doesn't know what you're right. saying or doing, Ex but it's like, still literally. wrong. It's like, literally. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> AITA for telling my husband I wasn't feeling comfortable with him wearing shorts around his mom. Oh, I read this one. It was a huge YTA. <laughs> It's OITA and utterly bizarre. It's truly. OP claims to come from. I honestly don't know if it's real. It's honestly so weird that it it's like it seems like it has to be real, but I'm just like, what? OP comes from a conservative background and husband's close to his mom and was literally wearing shorts, not boxers. That's what a lot yes. of people thought. No, no just shorts. shorts. And OP was like, wear pants or jeans. And he was like, no, I'm hanging out with my mom in my kitchen at my house. And then OP felt hurt and like her feelings were dismissed. Pawker91 wrote YTA. At first, I thought she was referring to him going down in his boxers as shorts. But then I read she wants him to wear pants, jeans, crazy. He's not allowed to wear shorts at a family barbecue in the peak of a hot season. Absurd. I just don't understand. Like, I, I mean, I guess it made me relate with women because women will be like, oh, well, yeah, I'm wearing a short dress. But why are you sexualizing it? And I guess really, you know, sh like shorts can be kind of sexualized and it's insane. It sounds so insane with a man. So I, I guess I felt like to a limited extent, some empathy come from this because it was kind of policing men's clothes. I mean, yeah, I'm glad like, you got empathy. Lady. It was I feel like whatever, like oppressive cult, the the girlfriend or the OP was brought up in is like, yeesh. You know, it's an impressive cult when it's oppressing men. It's almost <laughs> impressive. You're like, wow. Yeah. You're like, that takes work. <laughs> yeah. Not your boilerplate right. cult there. AITA for refusing to attend sister's barbecue for niece. <laughs> I love the shitty title. So bad. AITA. am like, human. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. YTA for being a robot. Wait, what? AITA for refusing to attend neighbors' Sister's barbecue, barbecue for niece. <laughs> Sister's barbecue for niece. I mean, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, not the asshole. 
Um, you would think, you would think. Here's the deal. So OP's 14-year-old niece is going away to a fancy boarding school, and the mom is throwing a goodbye party, as you do. Here's the thing, though. OP has, like, moral obligations to the concept of a boarding school. They say kids at boarding schools hmm. have been shown in scientific studies to have experienced trauma, homesickness, etc. Her daughter is only 14. She still needs parents. I've been open about my stance since this spring. Uh, when it was announced that the niece would be sent away. And so now OP is basically refusing to go out of protest. The top comment said, Mm -hmm. YTA, you will give up the chance to say goodbye to your niece because you don't agree with the parenting decision. That, quite frankly, is none of your business. You are acting like a child. The party is to send off your niece with love and good memories, not an endorsement of the decision. So, yeah. Perfectly put. Perfectly put. Yeah, this is not like a wedding between, like, your friend and her horrible, abusive fiance who cheats on her all the time. This is a boarding school goodbye party. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's and it's not an endorsement. It reminds me of something my friend Christy says a lot. She'll be like somebody like somebody reject rejecting you or like uh, is not a referendum on who you are as a person. Ah, I like that. You know, like it's like don't take it so personally. And yeah, I, I think that's just a terrible way to send that message. It's like express your concerns, and that's that. Yes. So, well, you won, All Sarah. Right. I guess you won because you'd seen it before. But a win's a win, and she's the guest of verdict queen. She's the journalist <laughs> queen. She's the meme queen. There we go. She's the PR queen. You know, guys, what can you do? I'll tell you what you can do. Please rate, review, subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. It helps the podcast grow. Um, We actually do have a review here. Love it. I just found this pod. It's my comfort pod. I cannot get enough. Honestly, I think it's something about both Sarah and Danny's voice that can soothe me. I listen while I'm working at my desk, driving, at the gym, etc. I love their banter, and although Danny can be problematic, (laughs) for the most part, he holds himself when accountable when he is corrected. Hey, reviewer, I'll push back on that. I'm always accountable. I I always am accountable. Yes, it's very true. Send me a message if there's anything I haven't accounted for. I'll account for it, baby. (laughs) I absolutely adore Sarah's laugh. I've been binging all their episodes, and I'm almost done, and I'm so sad about it. It's been going in random order, so not sure who anthony is quite yet oh boy you'll get there <laughs> once i can afford it i'll definitely be joining the patreon i need more than once a week love it heart All heart right. and then glowing review but then they said they have an issue with the sound quality oh, well i really weird. put a lot of time and effort into the sound quality so actually please do follow up and give me a specific thing i can see what i can do for you but uh i try i'm trying my best folks yes sarah you thought that review this review might be even oh, better. Oh, wow. I love that review. This review is, this review, it just paints so many pictures in my head. I regularly drive up to my family farm and the three hour drive was boring and dreadful until I found this podcast. All right. I'm sure you've never seen the Sask Prairies. I don't even know what that nope. is. But there's only so many canola fields you can look at before <laughs> it gets very old. Okay. I enjoy the up. <laughs> right? I enjoy the updates on both your lives and the opinions you have. Most of the time, if I had read some of these on Reddit, I would have came to a different conclusion without hearing outside perspectives. Mm. Very engaging and entertaining from Nicole in Canada. Oh, we love, love to see it. And the title is Bed Pos- Best Pot I've Listened to. Nicole, oh, that really honestly That's so nice. brings tears to my eyes. Oh, yeah. We did it, guys. I always think about that now, Sarah. Your little hemming and hawing sound. Mm. I use it a lot mm. now. Oh, thank you. Do it. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes Sarah, that is what a i good do laugh oh thank you i don't think i ever realized i like your laugh i never had that thought before oh thank you i was it's we did laugh. these audio features in class and i was just everybody else had these newscaster voices and then i heard my voice and i was like oh can i dig a hole in crawl into it but then some guy said i had a good like npr voice but i think what it was is i just i was doing like a lot of takes of my narration because i feel like we do this for like mm. the podcast and, and ad reads and stuff so i know how to do like different inflections so i knew to do like a bunch of different mm. takes to like choose the best ones but mm. whatever i'll take the compliment yay love it all right all y'all we got one heck of a juicy app for you today our second story of the day aita for not wanting to contribute to cousin's wedding registry oh, probably the third aita we've read today with a <laughs> I was, sort of I was gonna say yes oh that people are going People are going on the subreddit and just like, fuck it, just AITA, person, house, yeah, dog, literally. fuck. <laughs> AITA, I'm a 30-year-old woman, like... <laughs> <laughs> 
AITA, our first story of the day, for refusing to remove a scary welcome mat from outside my door. I am just just the, the <laughs> premise here. I, I don't know if I can even imagine a scary welcome mat. What's on this thing? I don't know. I live in an apartment complex. I was never really familiar with any of my neighbors as I pretty much kept myself, kept to myself, presumably. A friend of mine, as a joke, got me a welcome mat with Pennywise the Clown from the movie It. It's kind of a 3D mat that shows you falling into a hole with Pennywise waiting at the bottom. I should specify this friend recently passed away, so this mat is somewhat sentimental to me. Okay. I got a knock at my door, and it was a woman who lives in the same building as me. She asked me to change my welcome mat because it scared her kids. I told her it was given to me by a friend who died, and it has sentimental value. Close the door. She complained to the leasing office, and the manager called me. I told him the situation and asked him, what lease clause am I violating? He was tongue-tied. I said, tell me which clause I'm violating, and I will remove it, and then hung up. A-I-T-A. I'm going to be honest. The first thing I did after reading this was Google the welcome mat. And, like, the thing is... Pennywise is scary, but the actual welcome mat, he's at the bottom of this hole, but it's like a black and white checkered hole. So it's clearly not realistic at all. So I don't like I can see how little kids might be afraid of the mat, but I'm also like, this isn't a realistic thing. Google it. Oh, man. I don't know. This is creepy, Sarah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like a basically... To, to show how it's 3D, the checkers kind of communicate that. It's pretty well done, yeah. actually. It does look 3D. But it's not like a real hole that you would see out in the wild ever. <laughs> yeah, but it's Pennywise, and Pennywise is really, really creepy. So, And kids are really just scared at a different level. I remember just being terrified of shit as a kid. I don't know. And honestly, I don't know if I believe OP throwing in this detail about the friend died recently, like maybe, but it just kind of feels like the kind of thing where he's like, well, they don't know that my right. friend didn't die. So I'm allowed to like say that he could have died. It just it has that vibe to me. For me, it actually gives OP less of a leg to stand on, because if this mat is sentimental for you, then you should keep it inside your house. Yeah, hang it up if it's so sentimental. Yeah, or just even on the inside where people aren't stepping on it with their dirty shoes. Like, how sentimental can yeah. it be? I think the ar the argument that's stronger is just like, this is my welcome mat. <laughs> yeah, I think like, I just think this is very common sense neighbor etiquette. It's like, look, you're scaring kids. You're making kids uncomfortable. And clowns, I think, are a special case. I, I remember clowns, as a kid, that's a good everyone... Point. Right. Everyone was afraid of clowns like like people have real issues about clowns. Like it's kind of fucked. like there's a lot of collective trauma with clowns. And I don't I don't know if that's just <laughs> yep. the movie. It I, I don't know what that is. Where did it start? I don't know. I think it started with it. But like I feel like it's echoed out because it's such a common fear. Clowns, you know, which is so yeah. hard on me because I, I do identify as a clown a little bit. But <laughs> um, same. Yeah, it's I mean, I'm just trying to think of analogies here, like Halloween decorations that go too far, Christmas decorations that go too far. It's like, OK, here's an example. If you had ridiculous Christmas lights that were so bright, you know, that they were messing with your neighbors and your neighbor asked you to do something, I would be like, yeah, dude, like you're putting up decorations for fun and you're actually messing with your neighbor's vibes and life like that's rude. And, and, you know, this, in this case, you're scaring kids and it just seems. True. I guess my one counterpoint is like, well, shouldn't the onus be on the parent to like, I don't know, tell these kids why they shouldn't be afraid of the mat. But that's not. Versus like. Yeah, but that's not how fear works when you're a child. You, as a child, okay, you know that werewolves aren't real. Like people tell you that, but you can still stay up all night being afraid of them. I haven't been many okay. times. <laughs> JBHO one YTA just popped the mat inside the door. Small children get irrationally scared by stuff. Boom. I think that's the perfect phrase for it. it, it it's, it's not that they're stupid. It's that the fear just like outpaces irrationality. They're, you know, they're small kids. They're morons. Yeah. No, no, it's not that they're morons. It's that they don't have control of their emotions. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think anything that's irrational inherently makes the person stupid. It's just by nature irrational. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm trying to remember uh, some key incidents of being terrified when I was a kid. I remember we saw Cujo 
And Cujo is about a mm, dog. You ever see mm-hmm. Cujo? The Cujo is a big dog. Um, I didn't see it, but I know the movie. Yeah, he's a big dog, and he's going to eat somebody. He's going to eat a kid and a mom in a car, and he's just a big, scary dog. And it's a pretty well-done movie because, like, basically nothing happens except the dog is outside the car, <laughs> and it's fucking scary. And I remember my friend couldn't sleep the whole night, and he was so afraid of it. But Cujo didn't really scare mm-hmm. me because I thought, you know, logistically, I'm like, there's no way a dog could really break into the house and then break through a door. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of time. <laughs> Time. That's so true. But That's it funny. scared my friend. I remember as a very little kid, there was like a bumper on like, like literally like a 10 second trailer, like on a TV show. They're like, are werewolves real? We'll find out after the break. And I remember just what? like thinking about that and being so afraid of werewolves. Hmm. I'm trying to think of my irrational kid fears. Quicksand. Definitely. That was a real fear. I watched way too many cartoons. I was really afraid of leeches. I think I probably saw a scary episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? No, I wouldn't even watch Are You Afraid of the Dark. Ticks. Ticks freaked me out when I saw my first tick. I felt like a tick was going to be on me. Ticks are scary. I hate ticks. Yeah. I hate ticks. Yeah. And then there was this one episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I don't know why I watched that show, but like. I feel like we didn't watch it, but sometimes it would be on and like caught an episode or two. But there was this one episode where these like swamp people would like come and like, I don't know, I guess kill you or turn you into swamp person. But I don't don't remember that. But like you would know because they would come when you were sleeping and they would like drip the swamp goo on your forehead. And that's how you knew you were a goner. So Mm. I was like totally afraid of that. Like I woke up, I had nightmares about having the swamp goo like dripped on my forehead. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think this really just comes back to etiquette. It's like you're scaring the kids. But look, let's read some. Uh, a lot of people are with me. YTAing it. But let's read some NTAs. Crindali NTA. But I would be worried the neighbor will just take it. Do you have a balcony or patio you could put on it? If not, and knowing the sensible value, I just put it inside your door. Mm-hmm. Exacting Rock 2822. No assholes here. It's a welcome mat, so it's understandable if you'd want it at your door. But this lady approached you in a well mannered way, asking to remove it, providing a valid explanation. She was well within her right to make a formal complaint if she's already asked and it's continuing to scare her kids. Yeah, I'm actually with that. I could actually, yeah. Sweaty Fig 3000. NTA, not even a little bit. It's a mat. Kids can learn to not be scared of inanimate objects. Her mom can freak out and force the idea that the mat is bad and will hurt them. And they are right to be scared of it. Why don't they just not look at it? It can't hurt them in any way. Expecting the world to bend to their needs is a great way to raise a new generation of narcissists. Sigh. Calm down. Relax. Sir. Relax. I, yeah. I don't know. Because... That's the thing about I don't think I, I'm not going to go with this like slippery slope argument. I kind of agree. Like, I don't know. Part of me like understands. I kind of feel like getting rid of the mat can maybe sort of like legitimize the the fear. But like, but I don't know. You don't need to be doing mat exposure therapy either. Like, I think it's a fair ask. I think him not wanting to do it is also fair. I think he should get rid of it. It's a welcome mat in an apartment complex. Nobody cares. It's not doing anything. If it's sentimental, keep it inside. Like, you're not losing anything. Nobody gives a shit about it. Yeah. I mean, I think he just should because it's, like, not worth a neighborly fight. But I don't know that I'm ready to, like, call him the asshole for not doing that. Yeah, it's very soft because it's, like, it's just a mat. It's not the worst crime in the world. I also don't know how old the kids are. If the kids are, like, four and five or something, then I would be like, yeah, dude, come on. You're freaking the kids out. Yeah, but if they're like eight, it's kind of yeah. like, all right, well, stop letting them watch but it. But I just think, <laughs> I mean, just as a strategy, why not? Like, it's a freaking mat. Nobody cares about your mat in a positive way. You're getting a negative reaction. Like, okay, maybe I'm going to be an annoying quote unquote influencer right now. But like, I put up this TikTok ha, and bad. it was doing pretty well. Uh, it was doing pretty well, but it was getting a fair number of negative comments. And I had had a TikTok before like go viral that got a lot of negative comments and it really had a negative impact on me. And so I was like, look, this TikTok is doing well and I could get a lot of views on it. But then I was like, I'm also going to probably get more negative comments. And so it's like in a world right. where I can trivially reshoot the TikTok and just, you know, redevelop the idea. Why would I like be stubborn about this and start arguing with people? Like it just is rubbing some people the wrong way. And so that's my fault. Mm -hmm. And so I just made the TikTok private and I'll just reshoot it. And like, who gives a shit? You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And like, I don't know. I just think there's something about internalizing negative feedback and being like, look, this doesn't need to be a big deal. Just take the feedback and act on it. Right, right. I do think like you're, yeah, I feel like from you, it's also driven from a place more 
not more, but like as well as like, well, this could like if I do want to dig my heels and I feel like you see this all the time with like mm-hmm. celebrity, quote unquote, like celebrity public shaming. It's mm-hmm. like you see it all the time where like like people will try to be like, hey, this is fucked up. And you can either be like, you're right. That was fucked up. And like delete it or whatever the case may be. Or you can dig your heels in. But the problem is when you dig your heels in, like you're really just inviting even more negative attention. Like, yeah, you could get some more positive attention, but it'll also probably magnify the negative attention. So I feel like that's also the case with like a TikTok if you're getting bad comments on it. You yeah, know? actually, okay. I kind of want to go into it because it is kind of AITA, but let's settle on this situation. Ooh. I'll talk about it. So AITA for refusing okay. to remove a scary yes. welcome out from outside my door. I think we agree... I think it's kind of like NAH or extremely soft YTA for me. Yeah, I kind of feel that way. I'm like, you should still put it inside, even just from like a logistical perspective of like, well, you don't want anyone to fuck with it now, but. Super reasonable. Okay, so the TikTok was about this grocery chain, Aldi. Have you heard of Aldi? So it's It's very, very cheap. It's It's very, very cheap. And um, what they do is they have cereal and the cereal is a blatant ripoff of Kellogg's cereal, General Mills cereal. Blatant. I love it. I love like generic stuff. Well, that we had that at camp. We'd have Cocoa Spheres. Yeah, exactly. Wow, this is very similar to that. So uh, basically, the TikTok was like <laughs> Aldi has one trademark case after trademark case, and then I show some pictures I found online of like blatant ripoffs they did. Um, all they also you can mm-hmm. spend a dollar thirty on fruit rounds, which are a Fruit Loops ripoff. And, and then I said, don't feed it. this, don't feed Obsessed. this to your kid because they'll turn into a plagiarist. Um, which I thought was pretty funny, but you didn't laugh. So maybe it's not, but, uh, people didn't like it. Um, and here's what's, here's, what's funny about it. And I got sanctimonious was they were like, what are you, what is Kellogg's paying you? Right. That was like kind of the angle of the comments. <laughs> right. Cause it, Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah. That's a weird take. That's not the take okay, that well, I expected yeah, what did you people expect? to have. I don't know. Like, I don't really know what I would expect, but it, I guess my whole like I buy generic stuff all the time, but my view is uh, unless with certain brands like Target's generic brand is amazing. Mm -hmm. Archer Farms, they have this really good trail mix. But like I feel like unless it's certain cases, you're not really buying the generic brand because it's superior to the brand name. Like you're buying it because it's possible and it's cheaper right i mean look as a as a creative person and recognizing that branding is done by creative people like yes it is done for corporations i still do like just kind of dislike the the brand theft of it but but here's the funny part to me was that people did kind of come at this like oh danny you feel so bad for kellogg's like they're a huge corporation and and people kind of painting me to be like a corporation defender but and i didn't know this sarah but then i looked it up and let me tell you something kellogg's of course is an enormous corporation but aldi is like literally Mm -hmm. like 10 times bigger like five times bigger yeah aldi is a huge no how what do they own oh my god they own they own fucking trader joe's they own Trader Joe's. They do oh, like ninety wow. billion dollars of revenue, and Kellogg's does like twenty billion. So like they're just a monster oh. corporation. Wow. wow! And so I was like, I was like starting to write this out in a comment, getting all sanctimonious. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be on. I'm not going to be a TikTok commenter. I'm going to privatize this and I'm going to redevelop this idea. But I did think it was interesting because you know in comedy we talk a lot about punching up versus punching down, and then I was like, kind of in a. W- yeah, I love that people think Aldi is like this. Exactly. Mom that, that w- I do think I do think that people thought. Well, I also thought this because I have like a Lidl near me and I the, I assumed they're kind of the same. They're both kind of like discount like grocery stores. I kind of assumed it was like a more yeah. niche chain, but still still a chain. But, th- you know, it's not ubiquitous. Um, but holy shit. Yeah, um, Lidl, German retail group, Schwartz Group, revenue in 2019. It's the best. $103 billion. So, what? Oh, no. hello, I'm little grandma Lidl. I flew here on my private jet and I have oh a 40 God. room castle in Sweden. Yeah. No, but it is funny because. <laughs> wow, my mind something is blown. About the- but is it is Kellogg owned by General Mills or no? No, I think Kellogg's is a publicly traded company. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So anyway. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Yeah, but it's, it's you know, it's taking feedback. Anyway, that's our little TikTok tangent. Um, So, all right, here we go. Next situation. Let's do it, people. AITA for it. not wanting Let's to contribute it. to Cousin's Wedding Registry. 
My husband, 34M, grew up with his cousin, 32F, in the same house, and he treats her like a sister. A few years ago, she went through a horrible breakup after eight years of dating the same dysfunctional guy, which left her with nothing but five-figure credit mm. card debt. You really do hate to hear it, people. Oh, when it first hard. happened, we were very sympathetic, invited her to hang out with us for a week since we live about 600 miles away. We paid for her going out with us happily, knowing what she was going through. She offered to pay us back, but we declined to take her money. My husband and I are both financially literate, so when she felt better, we went out of our way to help her renegotiate and settle her credit card debts and work through an entire financial plan with her so she could start to build her retirement nest of eggs. As time goes by... <laughs> nest okay. of eggs. As time... <laughs> it's not it. Yeah, it's just close. nest egg, right? It's a nest egg, time, yeah. And what other kind of egg funny. would there really be? But anyway, as time goes by, Cousin started doing better. She got a much better job in management and started dating her new financially secure man. Six-figure white-collar job and a paid-off house. Wow, paid-off house with the All intent right. to marry. Wow, Glow yeah, up. she blew up. Fast forward to recent month. <laughs> we just welcomed our first child in <laughs> April, and we sent her on her registry at least three months ahead of time. We didn't have a crazy registry. We have about 30 to 40 items listed including some $8 to $20 stuff like baby towels and books because to us it's a thought that counts and we made major purchases like car seat and baby furniture ourselves. However, our registry was ignored by cousin and she was notably the only family on either side who didn't do anything with the registry. As of a week ago, we received said cousin's wedding registry and I told my husband I did not want to contribute because gift giving seemed to be only one way in this relationship. My husband was not happy and called me a petty asshole over $25 baby gifts. And I said I should get over it or forget that his cousin didn't contribute because it is not significant and her baby has everything he might need. He further said for us to not contribute to her wedding registry would be ruining a lifelong sibling-like relationship that is so precious. A-I-T-A. -A. Damn. I mean, my question actually is... Um, did they have a baby shower or just a registry? Because I don't know, as I get more like invited to these events, mm. it's really easy to just lose track of, oh, what have I like, have I sent something? Which event do I need to bring something in person to versus like, which can I send ahead of the time? Like for a bridal shower, the whole thing is you open the gifts at the bridal shower unless it's otherwise specified. So like you know, you don't want to like buy something off the registry and ship it to the couple. This to me just seems like if you have an open ongoing registry, it just really seems like it's easy to just forget about it. So what are you saying, though, that the cousin could have just forgotten? I'm like, maybe the cousin. Yeah, just it just slipped. And like, well, I don't know. I I under I guess I understand why, like, given their history, the OP is attaching malice to this. But and the first time I read it, I was kind of like. Yeah, fuck her as well. But now I'm kind of like, well, do you actually know that she intentionally snubbed you guys? Yeah, I was I was there as well, especially with eight dollar gifts. You go, you look, you're like, oh, let me look at this later. And you just forget. Exactly. And then you just forget. And then you're like, fuck, what was the link? I threw out the invitation or, you know, whatever. I threw out the thing. And then. You, you yeah, know. yeah. KL writes NTA. It seems that if you're OK with not contributing to a registry, you should also be OK with not getting anything. Yeah, but it's kind of like. Well, listen, a wedding registry is different because it is rude to like presumably go to someone's wedding and not get them a gift. Yeah. <laughs> like if you have a if you have kind of an open baby registry where you're just like, we're having a baby. Here's some things we're going to need at, you know, some point in the next nine months. I think that's different than a wedding registry. Yeah, that's true. Just like why be petty? Just it's. Yeah, I think OP, this this feels like they have some resentment about like how they helped the cousin, but and like didn't pay, maybe didn't get the anything back. But like they chose to forgive that. Right. debt. And I also think when you lend family money, you you should just take it as a gift. Like, don't really ever don't ever give someone money with with the like intention that you're going to get it back, because I think it just like can complicate relationships. Yeah, no, it really can. Flora Pompeii writes, YTA, scorekeeping with gifts is awful. It is. I hate gifts. Don't give me any gifts. Let's hang out. <laughs> Lightning Lilac, <laughs> Hassel's here, but I think you should defer to him here. I don't think you're wrong for not wanting to contribute, which she hasn't returned the favor. But your husband is also not an asshole for not wanting to cause drama over one gift. Since it's his relationship, I would just let it go. That's exactly how I feel about this. It's like, just mm. let it go. Who cares? Yeah, I think that... The OP should let it go. I also think like 
the husband should just spearhead whatever gift they get. And it's a joint gift from the couple. I mean, which is what would happen anyway. You're not going to individually send a wedding gift when you're a married couple. So I I do think OP kind of would be wrong for being like, no, well, us as a united front aren't sending a gift because we didn't get a a baby towel that we don't need. Yeah, I think... I think just why err on the side of unpetty. Can that be a phrase? Can I get that? Mm-hmm. Err on the side. I love of that. Why? Yeah. Just who cares? It's not gonna be that big of a deal when possible. Yeah. Mortgage yes. amazing. Nineteen sixty one. Not one of my favorite usernames. Yta. <laughs> it is being petty. Gifting is something isn't owed to anyone. I understand being upset and not wanting to send something, but saying it as they didn't give me a gift, so I won't give them a gift is pretty much the definition of petty. It's like truly, it's very just tip yeah, for tat. Exactly. AITA for not wanting to contribute yeah. to a cousin's wedding registry. I mean, I don't know that I would call you an asshole. I would just say you're being petty and why are you creating drama? But I actually would say no assholes here if they didn't even contribute. I would say YTA because, yeah, you're not being like an I, I just, again, it goes back to like, I think you're just like wrong. Wait, wait, situation. wait. Yeah, you made a distinction there that I didn't grasp. So they didn't, this was a baby oh. registry. You're saying there's a difference etiquette wise because you're saying these aren't the exact same. Okay. There can be because if they didn't have a baby shower, like a registry, it's like, I don't know, just yeah. an open like gift marketplace almost, you know? And if there's not an occasion tied mm. to it, then I can see how it would be really easy to forget to get a gift. I mean, I I nearly forgot to get my friend a gift for her baby uh, shower because she sent the invitation I so see. long ago. And then I was like, oh, shit. Like, and then I was like, oh, I got to order it to my own house and then bring it. So I think it's pretty easy to forget. I think a wedding is different. You can't really not. Mm-hmm. You can't really not. You can't show up empty handed. That makes sense now. Yeah. OK, no, I'm with you then. I, I'm with you. I didn't really fully understand the gap between the two events. ATA for not wanting to. Yeah, I mean, if they did have a baby shower, then I would, like, kind of understand, but it's also still, like, kind of petty to me because, I don't know, again, you're talking $8 books, and you're really going to, like, be petty over an $8 book that you don't need that you didn't receive. Like, yeah. just let it go. Even with weddings, like, you, like there are going to, if you have a wedding, like, there are going to be people who do not send you a gift, and it is like crappy, but you kind of have to decide, am I really going to be petty and hunt someone down for a gift for shit that again, I ultimately like can live without. And do I want to make this relationship weird or do I just want to let it go? Right. This seems like a clear case of let go. (laughs) I think we agree. ATA not wanting to contribute to cousin's wedding registry. I am agreeing with you now. YTA. I get it. There was a guy. All right, people, we're going to do a little bit of assholes at (laughs) hot dog, donut, coffee, ice cream. (laughs) Just kidding. So <laughs> if you guys don't know this reference, I live across the street from a place called Donuts, Ice Cream, Hot Dogs, Cigarettes. And um, damn it, I was yeah, close. It's taken me a while. I had to actually uh, memorize it. <laughs> but I made That's a TikTok so and the joke is that, you know, it's a little bit long winded to say that every time. So I just call it Donuts, Ice Cream, Hot Dogs, Cigs. Um, but <laughs> it is my favorite place in the world right now because the donuts are that. amazing. And actually the coffee smoothies are amazing. But as you know, I'm trying to make my own. Ooh. Um, but it's always an adventure going to the old donuts, ice cream, hot dog, cigs. Um, but I don't know if we could list assholes there because you've never seen it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wrote the JK beach. All the right, beach. let's do the beach. Let's do the beach. <laughs> Um, okay, this was me, a guy who says he'll meet you at a place called Perry's Beach Cafe, but there's actually two locations, and so you go to the wrong location, no. and you're like, that's all right, I'll just walk to the other one, and then you find out that it's like a 45-minute walk, and so you have to get <laughs> your car, but then you're in traffic, and then you're over like an hour and a half late of when you said you would meet the person. Oh, oh no, that is rough. Um. The person who is like, no, it's fine. I don't need sunscreen. I want a tan. And then they're like a, a tomato. And then they bitch about <laughs> it for the next like week. Guy who didn't bring any kind of a neck support is like, hey, can I use your backpack? <laughs> hey, can I use your cup to put my head on? Can I use your towel? Oh, the people who are like playing Frisbee with no spatial awareness. 
Like, hey, I'm laying yeah, out you're here. you going to kill a child. Quit running backwards. Exactly. Guy who runs into the Pacific in a moment of cinematic beauty, but then doesn't realize he's wearing his glasses and loses his glasses in the Pacific. Ooh. It was me, everybody. That happened to me. I was, was like, me. is that again, you again? <laughs> um, what about... Oh my gosh, the seagulls that take your food. Oh my God. Will the seagulls just be quiet for once? It's really a lot. That. They're always on about something. What are you talking about anyway? Nothing new is happening here. <laughs> um, yes. The guy who got a little beach tent and he won't share it with anyone because it's his beach tent. This is going to be me, but I haven't. But it's like a beach tent for it's one. It's a beach tent for one, and that's why I got it. It's for me. No sharesies. Get your own beach exactly. tent. Exactly. That's not asshole ish. Yes, exactly. Get your own. What about um, the person who brings snacks, but they only bring fruit? No, we need chips. We need sustenance. A grape's yes, not going to cut bring it. bring some hummus next time, Roger. What's your problem? Oh, yeah. The guy who um, who wears, uh, like, sneakers and just gets sand everywhere because it gets into the shoe. Uh. It's just a nightmare. <laughs> That's the worst. That's the worst. Okay, then what about also the person who like only brings alcohol and it's like you're going to dehydrate yeah, your yeah. ice or have a sip of water? Oh, I just brought a, a handle of McCormick's. Is that not good? <laughs> you die of dehydration. <laughs> You're going to be blackout by noon. Um, the guy who uh, is staring at women. That's me as well. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no, daddy. Oh, no. Up to no good as usual. Uh, I catch it. Whenever I catch myself, I avert my eyes. I'm like, what am I doing? No. Well, I hope you're at least wearing sunglasses. No, I don't own any sunglasses. I've always been kind of anti-sunglass. I don't know why. Because I why? guess I feel like, look, that's the world. So look at it. What's your problem? That's just what it is, dog. <laughs> You like staring into Not the, the sun? sun? Just like it's sunny out. I want to see it. I don't need to censor it, you know? Oh, Wow. Interesting. I don't know. And then it's like another item. I'm very, especially now when we have to add masks to the item list, I'm not ready to add an other item. That's just insane. Mm. I mean, I kind of so, get that. Guy who tries to do a hot take about sunglasses and literally nobody's on board. That's me as it well. I fucking no, I do like sunglasses. Bombs. I will say. All right, people, that's assholes at. Uh, let's wrap up here. This one, this, this one is. Let's do it. The cause of a lot of confusion and mystery and I'm very confused. Nobody yes. really knows. And then you know what's crazy though? Because I feel this was a conspiracy because right after we got this submission, the milk crate challenge started going viral. And I was like, what I saw people tweeting about milk crates, and I was like, have they all read this submission? Like, what <laughs> is it about milk crates? Here we go. AITA for moving an obnoxious stranger's crate on the bus line. It's 3 p.m. in Forest Hills, which is in Queens in New York. And I'm walking to the bus stop on the phone Ooh. with my wife. The woman ahead of me grows irritated two minutes into my phone call, puts down her crate to quote unquote safe her place. She doesn't say it, but it's clearly why. And goes and stands at the corner under no shade whatsoever, waiting for the bus while I'm on the phone. I call out to her and let her know that we left grade school years ago and there's no such thing as saving your place. Rated full okay. minutes. What does that mean, Sarah? Rated? Oh, waited? They must mean... I don't waited actually know. Min- they must mean waited a few minutes and then slid her milk crate yeah, to where maybe. I was standing and took her place. The bus came a minute later. Oh, okay. Two people ahead of me got on and so did she and I as well as the others behind us. Quite irritated, she asked me what I thought I was doing and I re- reiterated to her that this was not school and you could not save your place when you left the line. I'm not really asking if I was the asshole. I know I was. I'm asking if anyone else would have been irritated and what they would have done instead. This is really funny to me and very New York. I mean, the thing is, I like, yeah, OP was the asshole because he just escalated a situation that really didn't need to be. But I think this woman also kind of did too much from the beginning. Like, I don't know, unless OP was like cursing on the phone, you're at a bus stop, you're outside. I don't think it's that ridiculous to like have a phone conversation. Like, I feel like that's just something that I would tolerate and I wouldn't be so bothered that I would need to go like stand at the corner. I'm so fucking confused. So OP is in line and he's on the phone. I don't really understand because it's like at first OP's walking to the bus stop and then all of a sudden like 
they're at the bus stop and there's a line and this woman is right. Mad. But, well, here's the line that so confuses I, me the most. I'm confused by the jump in time. Okay. Well, yes. okay. So here's the chronology. OP gets in line. A woman gets behind him. He's on the phone. She gets annoyed. She leaves her crate to save her spot. No, oh, the, the woman was in front of OP. She leaves her crate to save her spot with OP talking on the phone behind her. But this is. I do feel that is a little here's bit what bogus. confuses the shit out of me, Sarah. She goes and yeah. stands at the corner under no shade whatsoever. Why is that relevant? Like, I don't know. I guess because it's like hot outside. I know, but I don't understand. What is he? Cr- like, she'd rather endure oh, the sun. I see. I don't know. That's how I read it. I actually will say, though, like having waited on a lot of bus lines, I do think that the crate is like a bogus move. Like. These people are complete strangers to you, and that's like just not really how that works. I I, I think <laughs> the thing is, I think if you're an eye shot, the crate flies. Um, in other words, if you leave an object there and you're still like within eye shot, or you have an agreement with someone, that's legal. But if you leave, like for instance, at Trader Joe's, there was a famous Trader Joe's debacle where. Um, <laughs> fa- I don't know where I get off saying famous Fam- on my yes. podcast that got probably 40 listens total. I told this story, but maybe there I should fish it out and just insert it in here. But, um, basically yes. I went to Trader Joe's and had an incident with roided out Mark Cuban and he had left his cart in the line. <laughs> Wait, literally no, Mark no, Cuban, a guy who looked, a guy who like, looked like Mark Cuban oh. on roids. You're right. He doesn't shop at Trader Joe's. He's a and, Okay. Yeah, he had left his cart in the line, but then just left and went somewhere else in the store and then accused me of cutting when I just got in front of his cart. And I was like, no, you can't cut a cart. You just left your... You also have to say something if you're going to be like, hey, shit, I really need to grab one thing. Yeah. You just tell the person. So anyway, I'm going <laughs> to see if I can find it. <laughs> That's weird. I guess the thing is, though, like if you're going to do a move like that, I guess my one... Um, sticking point is that it's contingent on the goodwill and mutual agreement of whoever's around you in the line so her doing this you're already kind of pissing off this person who is the sole person upholding your place in the line so how did you think that was really going to turn out when you're kind of making such a stink about i don't know something fairly innocuous by new york city standards and then you're going to really expect that person to like maintain this goodwill you're saying on her behalf? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have a huge problem with the crate system, although I would just use. I just think she I don't I don't think it was well executed. I don't think I don't think it's enough for me to, like, call her the asshole. But I also kind of feel like she played a losing game. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think OP is the asshole because, look, I think she didn't want to interrupt his call. Yeah. OP says they know they're the asshole. If, if I was in this situation, I would have just respected the crate. You were being a little annoying by being on your phone. It's obnoxious to be on your phone in a line. It's a little Especially annoying. If- I think it's a little annoying. I feel like OP didn't need to, like, call out to this woman and then make it into a right. thing. Legendary OT, uh, Ann T writes, OP, what the F is wrong with you? Wow, you know you messed up when Ann is just <laughs> coming for you. Oh, my gosh. I just think it's like, I don't know. It's just funny because it's like, I don't know. You you guys are all just equal, I don't know, waiters on this line. No one has any authority to decide what is not isn't mm-hmm. a thing. And any more so than any other person mm-hmm. on the line. I, I think Tammy P is nailing this. You're both the asshole and a child. Okay. Rude, rude, rude. To not appreciate she gave you privacy for your call in a public space and then you bullied her on top of it. I'm with that. Mm. I think she was doing the nice thing yeah. and she used the crate as a way of just saving her place but not wanting to be near your loud ass call, giving you your space. And yet you That's got all weird and butthurt about it. Uh, why are you're the obnoxious stranger, OP? I'm sorry. Thanks for listening to the pod. But like. No offense, leaving a crate is just not comparable to being on your phone with your wife. I hope you had a fun call, but I just don't think she did anything wrong. Yeah. I mean, alternatively, she could have just said, hey, can you hold my place? Because I don't want to be around you for this call. But that would have interrupted your call. And she did a less interruptive thing. What? Yeah. Okay, so they said they know they're the asshole. What would you have done instead? What I would have done instead is just respected her spot. You were on the call. You got your privacy, whether you wanted yeah. it or not. She didn't do anything to you. She just wanted her place back. So give her her place back. Nothing. Right. It's also like you cut one place ahead in line. So you didn't get any advantage. You just 
Yeah, you were just petty. That's okay, OP. We've all been there. You know, respect the crate lady. She put her crate there. She might have been the creator of the milk crate challenge. Nobody knows, but OP, you know you're the asshole. We love you, and it's no big deal, honestly. Whatever. We're all asshole. One time I was, like, trying to take the bus, but I think I had maybe recently moved here, and I wasn't sure, like, which direction was the right one, and the sign didn't really say, or I didn't know how to, like, interpret it. And so I asked someone, and they were like, where and all the subways were down in Queens. I feel like that's what it was. And like, so I was trying mm-hmm. to get on the bus and I didn't know if like which direction, like one direction was going to take me to like Rikers Island and then one was going into the city. So I wanted to make sure, obviously I was mm-hmm. getting on the right direction. And I asked the person, I was like, is this going into Queens or into the city? And they were like, well, where are you trying to go? And I was like, second Avenue in Manhattan. And they were like, oh no, you want to like, you want to take the R it's right there. And I was like, no, just which direction is this going in? And the person like wouldn't answer me. And I was like, well, which way are you going? And then the person was like, no, just get on the subway. And then I finally yelled, just forget it and stormed (laughs) away. (laughs) I was so mad. I still think about that day. I was just like, I do not understand. I don't remember if it was a man, but that would make sense. ATA for moving an obnoxious stranger's crate on the bus line. I think we agree. YTA, but look, uh, you know. It is what it is. Thanks for listening to the bot, OP. We yeah. love you. Yeah. Honestly, we're all the assholes hey, look, sometimes. On the Patreon, I tell the story of me engaging in a potential crime. So, oh boy. Oh. Ooh. You forgot it already? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. I just, it completely it's glazed over marginal. as a crime. It's honestly <laughs> incredibly marginal. But please, guys. Yes, for any police officers listening, it was really minor, nothing yeah, serious at all. Um, basically akin to taking straws from Donuts Ice Cream Hot Dog 6, which I have done, actually, because I need straws for guests if I make them a smoothie. Yes. Anyway. You know what I want to start doing is taking, like, really good pens from restaurants and stuff. Don't I do that. Don't do that. More because pens. the pens are, the okay, pens fine, are purchased I won't do by it. the servers. That's how it worked at the restaurant I worked at. Really? Yeah, so don't, don't steal pens from what? the servers. Yeah, That's it's totally fucked up. fucked up. Oh, my God. It should be purchased by the restaurant. They should you just write it think, off. Okay. No. Well, that makes absolutely no sense. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. I'll just go buy some go. pens. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the pod. Please rate, review, and subscribe. Please join us on Patreon. we got a great Patreon community. we got a virtual happy hour. we love to see you there. Um, and much love for y'all. We'll see you next Monday morning. Bye. Hoo-wee. That was a good one. <laughs>